we're kind of focusing on how surface properties are critical to adhesive bond performance. And that region of a surface that we define as being important to adhesion is really only about a half a dozen molecules thick, right? In our, in our discussion about chemistry of adhesion and surface energy, we talked about how properly prepared surfaces are chemically very reactive. And this is what promotes adhesion is that chemical reactivity. This means that a surface that's been properly prepared can react well with an adhesive or a coating, but it also means they can react during exposure to the environment and they can contaminate rapidly or oxidize rapidly. They can deteriorate rapidly in terms of the properties that we want to maintain for adhesion. So we've got to pay really close attention to this, right? And if we want to do controlled surface preparation, um, this can be really challenging because of this chemical reactivity of the surface, right? And quantitative measurement is critical for developing, controlling, and troubleshooting surface treatment and bonding processes. So what are the overall goals of surface preparation for bonding? Well, we're trying to create a surface that has certain properties, okay? And we got a list here of six of these properties that are very important in a, in a properly prepared surface. That surface has to be clean, right? That means we don't have any weak boundary layers on that surface that are going to interfere with the, with the adhesive being able to interact with that substrate. But in the process of cleaning and preparing that surface, the surface has to be mechanically strong. In other words, we don't want to grit blast it so aggressively that we mechanically damage the surface. And although it's clean and may have a high surface energy, it's now been physically weakened and it'll make a poor substrate for bonding. We need to avoid that. So, and in the process of, of, of cleaning and preparing that surface, we need to create a surface that has high enough chemical reactivity, right? And again, that's that, that's that thing we call surface energy, right? It's got to have high enough chemical reactivity to form a strong interface with the adhesive. And when we're preparing polymers, we have a different set of challenges than we do with those high energy surfaces, right? Polymers are low energy materials. And our challenge with polymers is to get a high enough surface energy in the first place to be able to get usable adhesion to it. So we're going to be talking about modification of those, right? Polymers like acetates, acrylates, nylons, they start out with pretty good, pretty high polar components of surface energy, and they're pretty easy to, uh, to bond in the beginning, right? Surface treating thermoplastics, it's not just a matter of cleaning them. We have to chemically modify that surface to introduce the reactive functionality that will let it bite onto it and bond to an adhesive, right? And primers for metals function by one or more of several different mechanisms, right? Number one, they can improve the shelf life of that surface. That treated metal surface is very high energy. It tends to want to continue oxidizing. It tends to absorb contaminants from the atmosphere. If we put a primer on it, we're going to protect that surface from corrosion and contamination during any time interval between applying that primer and doing our final bonding or coating operation. Okay? So that's one thing a primer does. It protects the surface. Another thing the primer does, it can enhance adhesion by providing for primary chemical bond formation between a substrate and the adhesive coating, right? And then finally, a properly designed primer can include corrosion inhibiting components that will improve the durability of that substrate adhesive interface. So a primer for metal can do a lot of stuff if it's properly done.